As of now in our discussion on mirrors, we spoke about plane mirrors. So we said that plane mirrors are capable of reflecting light and forming images. Now plane mirrors are not the only mirrors that are capable of reflecting light and forming images. A second type of category of mirror is known as a spherical mirror. And spherical mirrors are curved mirrors that are capable capable of reflecting light and forming images. Now spherical mirrors come into different categories. So we have two types. We have concave and convex mirrors. So let's begin by describing what a concave mirror is. So a concave mirror looks something like this. So let's suppose the rays of light are coming in from the left side as shown by these two rays and they're bouncing and reflecting off as shown. Now the viewer is also found on the left side of the mirror. So a mirror is defined as a concave mirror if the reflection takes place on the inner surface of the mirror and the surface bulges away from the viewer. In other words, it caves in as described in the following diagram. So notice we have two surfaces of the mirror. We have the outer surface as well as the inner surface. For a concave mirror, our reflection takes place on the inner surface of the mirror. And for a concave mirror, the center bulges away from the viewer as shown by the following diagram. Now let's move on to a convex spherical mirror. So, once again, we have the viewer who is found on the left side of the mirror. And the rays are coming in from the left side and are reflecting as shown in the following diagram. Now, a mirror is defined as a convex mirror if the reflection takes place on the outer surface of the mirror and the center of the mirror bulges towards the viewer as shown in the following diagram. So just like plane mirrors, spherical mirrors are also capable of forming images. But before we discuss the formation of images using concave and convex mirrors, let's discuss a few important terms. So we're going to examine something called the focus, the focal point, the focal length, as well as the radius of curvature. And we're also going to describe the relationship between the focal length and our radius of curvature. So let's begin by looking at the following statement. If the spherical mirror, be it a concave or a convex mirror, is only slightly curved, that is, if the size of the mirror is very small compared to the radius of curvature, then the reflected light rays will all meet at approximately the same point known as the focus or the focal length of the mirror. So the focus is known as the focal point of our mirror. So let's describe what exactly this statement means by looking at the following diagram by using a concave mirror. Now notice we could have also also used a convex mirror, but instead of using convex, we're going to look at just the concave example. So here we have a concave mirror. Once again, a concave mirror assumes that the center bulges away from the viewer who is found on the left side of the mirror. And the reflection is taking place on the inner surface of our mirror. So we have labeled point A, point B, and point C. So let's suppose our rays of light are coming in 
from an infinitely far distance away. For example, the rays of light are coming in from the sun and the person or the mirror is found on earth. So we can assume the distance is infinitely far away. So as the rays are going to come in, they're going to reflect and they're all going to essentially meet or intersect at a point labeled B. So point B is known as the focal point of the mirror. It's also known as the focus. Now the distance from the focus, the distance from the focal point to the center of our mirror, the distance BC is known as the focal length and it's given by lowercase f. The distance from point A to point C is known as the radius of curvature. It's given by R. Now, what exactly is the meaning of the radius of curvature? So, if we essentially follow the following mirror and form our circle, then the radius of curvature will be the radius of that circle formed. So, that's exactly what we mean by a radius of curvature. So, let's go back to this paragraph. So what this paragraph essentially states is the following. If the mirror is very small compared to the radius of curvature to this distance, then we can assume that all the rays that are reflecting will meet at a single point known as the focus or the focal point. Now, what exactly is the relationship between the radius of curvature and our focal length? So what is the relationship between R and F? So although we're not going to show this in this lecture, for spherical mirrors, the focal length F is equal to R, the radius of curvature, divided by 2. So this equation, this relationship, will become important when we're solving problems using concave and convex mirrors.